Okay, so I just wanted to show you some progress that I've been making on the firmware for the cellular IoT device. Um, what I've got is, I've got a little um, prototyping chip here, which is um, a, a tiny S3 board, which has got the new, newish ESP32-S3 part on it, which is what we're going to be using for the uh, initial firmware run. On the back of that, you see that I've just broken out a um, couple of pins for Serial, RX and TX. And um, what I'm doing with that is I'm bridging that serial port out of that little ESP device through to um, a, a Quactel modem EV, EVB that I've got here. Um, so if I just get this set up, this is the Quactel BG600L EVB, which again is what we're going to be using. So we're sort of replicating what the what the actual hardware is going to be doing, and if I um, I've got a little um, bridge which is bridging the serial that's coming in and out of the ESP and the serial that's coming in and out of the modem board that's going through my laptop here, so I can sort of see what's going on and they talk to each other and it sort of saves me having to wire things up directly. So we'll see some stuff going on through here. Now. Um, so what I did was I had some trouble getting Platform IO going, but I've now got that running and built up using Platform IO, which is how you build it, which is, is something that sits on top of the Visual Studio Code environment. So I've got that built, got that programmed into the part, uh, and that's running, that's on my network. And um, you can see uh, down at the bottom here that we've got some um, messaging coming out of it. So if I just reset this now, um, you'll see that it'll it'll boot up. It's just sending its boot messaging out, coming onto the Wi-Fi, and then what we've got is we've got the standard sort of Tasmota web interface here. And what's nice about um, the uh, the ESP is that it's got so much um, more space. You get a lot more functionality on the ESP32. And one of the things we can do is we can upload files to the file system, which is nice. And you can see here, I've been uploading uh, something called mqttcellular.be. Now that's a Berry file, and Berry is a very lightweight scripting language that Tasmota supports. It's really, really extensible. And I've been trying to take a look at how to, how to work this. And so this is an attempt at a Berry script, which talks over the ESP32 serial port, and that's going to talk to the, the Quectal modem. Now, in the BG600L, it's got support for MQTT, so you can send AT commands to it, telling it to send MQTT messages, which is quite nice, so you don't have to implement that protocol yourself. So I've chosen to go down that route to see how that works, and basically I've got a couple of little functions that bring up that MT MQTT connection and then publish, um, publish messages. So we're gonna be publishing messages over the modem, over the cellular, hopefully. So if I go back to my um, my uh, Tasmata web interface, first thing I've got to do is load in that um, Berry file, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So that's loaded in. And one of the really nice things about Tasmota being awesome is that I can hook my Berry code into the command interface. So I give it a new command and that will then result in my Berry code running. So I've done that, that's added this new cell pub command. And if I go into my standard um, console, I can give it um, a topic space, and you see I've just got a little replacement in there which gives me the MAC address of the, of the device I'm using here. And I'm sending a, a message payload on that topic. So if I uh, now over uh, too many windows here. If I go to my MQTT subscription, so that's just subscribing to my broker on my local laptop. So anything that goes into it, I will see. And what I can do now is I issue that command, and what's happening is that it's trying to bring up the connection. Uh, the connection's in fact already up, and there we go. That that message has come through, and that has gone over the cellular. Um, and you can actually sort of see all the commands that have been passed backwards and forwards to make that happen. And just to show you again, 
Hello, Tasmota World. And there you go, it's come through. So that's really nice. So that's a really basic proof of concept that we can take uh, an absolutely standard Tasmota uh, firmware image and with scripting we can add in a really complex, you know, we have the potential to add in complex customization and to add in the cellular support we need for the, for the cellular IoT. So then the next thing is we can sort of enhance this scripting and we can hook that into other things that are going on so perhaps local sensors or whatever it might be um, so I'm quite pleased with that and that's where I wanted to get to um, to prove out what I thought we would be able to do with Tasbota and it, and it seems that we can so that's great, good news